All right, well, uh, Cinema 4D just announced some new features, some of which are really big. If you saw the thumbnail, then you might have some idea of what I'm talking about, but let's go ahead and dive in. I wanna go over what is new, as well as take a quick look about how we can use some of these new features. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so if you just go to Maxon's webpage, um, you will see that they're announcing some new stuff, the biggest of which um, is pyro. So now we can do smoke, fire, explosions directly inside of Cinema 4D without any plugins. Um, it's also a part of um, Cinema 4D's new simulation system. So soft bodies, cloth, all of that good stuff. So that's probably the, uh, the biggest thing. Um, they've changed the Redshift camera a little bit. I think some things are a little bit more straightforward, which is great. I also heard them mention that they made the standard, the Redshift standard material, um, the new default, but I haven't seen that quite yet from my experiments. Um, they also made changes to symmetry. Uh, also, they've improved Redshift's materials, which is great um, in the perspective view. So that's awesome. Um, as well as some other procedural stuff. And if you want, you can see and go through the other changes for um, some of the other Maxon One apps, if you're interested in those. They also included a few more capsules. I'll have to dive into those. Um, and then if you go into the Cinema 4D product page itself, you can actually see a breakdown of video showing some of these features. But let's get into Cinema 4D and kind of see what some of these look like. So the smoke and fire, obviously the biggest ones. They mention it works on the GPU, um, and I've seen pretty good playback performance, but I haven't verified that it actually is using my GPU, and it's pretty straightforward from what I can see. Um, all you need to do is on an object, go to simulation tags, and then choose pyro, okay? We also get this pyro object by default, which seems to do more with um, some basic settings as well as caching, okay? And then the, the more involved, general simulation settings here. Um, and then we have our tag, which is specific to the object we play it on. And if you just go ahead and hit play, um, you're gonna see a pretty darn good, you know, explosion with fire and smoke. Now at this point, this is not cached, it won't render. Um, so that's kind of the next part of this, okay? And I'll definitely uh, at some point have a video diving into these settings um, once I have a chance to get a little bit more comfortable with them. But what I have seen is if you do want to render them, all you do is create a pyro material, which um, it, they I assume they just renamed the standard volume material to pyro uh, material. And it, what's nice about it is it already has um, our s channels set up for us. So the scatter is in there um, as well as the emission. Okay, or I believe the two big ones I've seen. And once you do that, um, you need to cache it in order for it to render, which you do in the cache tab here. So I had to enable it, um, tell it where to save. But um, now, you know, I get speedier playback. Okay, and if I was to go and render this, you would see that it renders as well. So really nice. It appears to be really easy, though, like I said, I'll definitely have to dive in more uh, to this and, and see exactly what we can do. Uh, one of the other things that I mentioned was new was the Redshift camera. So the object properties here have changed quite a bit. We can change the type a little bit easier, um, focal length. Um, I wish we still had those drop downs for the different presets, but um, you know, still have something that's pretty easy to work with, sensor options. Um, in the optical section, that's where they've kind of changed things up so we can work with exposure in a couple of different ways, EV only or something a little bit more filmic. Depth of field, I think has been renamed, um, which I, I think is great. No more having to check enable, um, you know, in order to add it, uh, you have a separate option for a bokeh here. And once again, I'll have a video at some point diving into these features much more extensively. I also wanted to point out, I just realized we no longer have the Redshift camera tag. So it's baked in to the camera itself. We also have color correction built in, though I don't think that is anything new. Um, lens effects, those look, let's see, they look about the same, although I think they're all in one now instead of having the bloom, flare, and streak all broken out. So should be the same there. There also is a way to display the frustrum, um, which is useful for working with uh, depth of field. Okay, so 
that will be a nice addition, though you could always just enable it here as well. So I'll be curious to see if that still works in a Redshift um, camera. So those are the biggest new features in this, you know, kind of random update that seemingly came out of nowhere. Um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I will be putting out more detailed videos diving into these new features as soon as I can. So until next time, take care.